Hello everyone, my name is Ben Eady and I'm the online media manager of ModernAnalyst.com, the premier online community for business analysts. I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar entitled Realizing the Value of Process Modeling and Automation with BPMN 2.0. Today's featured speaker is Barry Valentine from Benitasoft and the webinar will last approximately 60 minutes including the Q&A session. So make sure to submit your questions in advance using the questions feature of the webinar software. I would also like to say thank you to Benitasoft for sponsoring this event and at this time I'll turn it over to Barry to get us started. All right, thank you very much Ben and thank you everyone for coming, taking time out of your day to spend some time with us online. As Ben mentioned, we'll be talking about the value of uh, process modeling and using modeling and once we're doing modeling to build automated web applications to automate those processes. And we'll also be talking about some uh, going over quickly the BPN 2.0 nomenclature and elements so that those are the things that you can use to build your processes and also we'll be talking a little bit about Bonita Soft and we're using some Bonita Soft tool to actually do a live demonstration to show you when you've got a process to implement what you can do with a business process management suite and actually build the process from scratch, diagram it and implement it. So here's a quick agenda of what we'll be covering today. We'll be going over a little bit of uh, intro for BPM, uh, Bonita BPM, covering that a little bit, give you a little bit of an overview of the company very quickly, and then be moving on to a discussion of the BPN 2.0 elements, quick overview there, and then move on to the meat of the webinar, which is a live demonstration, where I'll be using some tools to actually implement a small but, if, but useful process, uh, just to show you how that's done, and then we can employ that and run that, and then we'll have a Q&A session at the end of that. So let's talk a little bit about Bonita BPM, it's like why use a software suite uh, such as Bonita BPM. Well, we are open source on our origins. We've got over 2 million downloads. And since we're open source, we've got 60,000 community members that are behind our open source version of our software, which just provides an awful lot of good support with all those users out there. There's a lot of uh, people answering questions on forums. So if you have any issues or questions, it's a good resource to get some answers. And on our commercial side, we've got 600 customers. I'll talk about, we'll quickly cover our commercial offerings soon. But we've got 600 customers, 125 employees, and we have 100 uh, technical and system integration partners. So we're a pretty solid company. We just recently released the latest version of our software, we needed PPM 6.0, and that's what we'll be using in the demonstration today. And here's a quick overview, a little screenshot of this Bonita Studio. The Bonita Studio was the thing that you use to design your processes. You do your diagramming. You, it's basically it's a drag and drop interface. Comes complete with an HTML form builder. So when you build your processes and need to have user interaction, you can quickly put together an HTML form that the users will use. Also, we offer easy connectivity. So one of the key elements of having a process in, in your organization is getting that process to talk to your legacy infrastructure systems. That could be your email systems, databases. SAP, Salesforce, what have you. So you have a lot of those vertical systems you need to integrate. Uh, our tool will let you quickly build connections to those so your process can span all your vertical applications and tie them all together into one cohesive process. Mentioning the connectors, the connectivity, we have out of the box, we have many connectors that quick, very quickly and easily let you connect to systems like Salesforce, JasperSoft, Oracle databases. We support several databases that you can connect to easily. Also, if there's some that you need, we have the tool we provide allows you to quickly and easily create your own. So if you have your own system that is not supported directly by us, right out of the box, it's pretty straightforward to go ahead and build your own. And then you can share that amongst your user community and all your users in your organization can get access to your legacy systems through those connectors that you build. And when you've, once you've developed the processes, you deploy them. And most, most often, we, uh, most users will use it, the piece of software, another element that we have called the Bonita Portal, which is a web application that users log into and they get access to all their inboxes, their, uh, all their tasks that they have available to them through the processes that they've been assigned to and that they'll be working with. And there's a desktop version of that. And also new in version 6, we have a mobile support where that Bonita Portal is fully supported on mobile devices as well as automatically supporting your web applications. We are software smart enough to switch the CSS and change the formatting to fit a small, smaller mobile device. 
supported right away, so there's no additional work required. As I mentioned, we are a commercial company. We started as open source in 2000, and we are now going commercial in 2009. So here's quickly just what we offer as uh, commercial offerings. We support, we have subscription packs, we call them subscriptions. And if you see in the center, this community version, the red circle, that's the version that you can download for free. It's got a lot of fully full features there. You can do an awful lot with it. But if you're an organization, uh, maybe a little bit larger, you might want to go to, uh, we have uh, teamwork, efficiency, performance, Subscriptions that give a little bit more features, like teamwork will do, let you do more shared uh, process development. We have some advanced portal features in the efficiency pack, and the highest level one is performance, which has more mission critical monitoring. It's more sophisticated error management. You can on the fly reconfigure processes that, processes that you've deployed. So. Okay, let's cover a little bit about BPM 2.0. So what is what is it? If you haven't heard of it, you know it's a standardized graphical notation for modeling business processes. It's really just a it's a standard notation that will, is being widely adopted. So if you learn BPN 2.0, you can very easily build processes that others, of course, can read and understand. So it's a very good way uh, to design your processes. And they thought the object management group that designed it did give it a lot of thought into designing elements that can lets you express a wide variety of process needs. So you can very easily divine, uh, design and lay out a business process with the VPN nomenclature. That would be very effective and that's what we use in our, in our tool. So here's some common artifacts that you will find in the VPNN, VPNN the nomenclature flow objects which uh, define activities or events that happen, connections, sequence flows, messages flows, uh, associations. Common also are swim lanes, you know, in the BPN nomenclature, a pool is a process, and inside of that pool you have lanes, like swim lanes, which dictate uh, actors. There's also the concept of actors, which really says, who is doing what in my process? Typically you'll see lanes, uh, which one actor is defined, assigned to be the primary actor inside of a particular swim lane. And there's other artifacts as well. Here's some of the events that we'll be using. We're going to, you'll see these a lot in VPN and uh, process diagrams uh, for starting, for, uh, for events that happen at the end and events that happen in the middle. So we see here like the little envelope is a message which is a way to communicate in between uh, two processes, not to be confused with email, it's not an email message, but it's just a way for one process to send a packet of information to another. And when you build a larger universe of processes, this is very handy to have. You can have processes start other processes and hand them data. It's very, very effective, very, very efficient to use. Also, we have timers. The standard supports timers, so you can say this process will start on the last business day of the month, and you can just set that up so it'll be ex it'll execute, and you won't have to worry about it. The execution engine will start that up at the right time. That will happen automatically. A lot of the tasks you see are human tasks, meaning that it requires human interaction. In most cases, it'll be, in our case, it'll be a web form. Someone's going to be on their web browser filling out data. There's service tasks, which don't require any human interaction. Those will be tasks that the machine, that the computer server, the execution engine will just execute. No person will be involved. We'll see some of that in our demo. And there's also the call activity. Many times, a there will be many sequ a larger sequence of steps that happens in a process and you want in a one larger diagram to reference all the activities in that one smaller step. So a call activity basically it's like a, a subroutine or a function call if you're familiar with programming. Uh, so basically it's a way to express a larger collection of activities in a small little box on your screen on your diagram which makes it a lot easier to read and, and uh, keep your diagrams up to date. Of course, you need to have gateways. Gateways are the things that allow uh, alter the sequence flow. And there's three different kinds that we have. Parallel, which which you'd use to have uh, multiple tasks happening at once. It could be multiple actors or the same actor. A conclusive gateway. We'll see that in our demo, which means all the flow flow will go into the gateway, and only one and only one path will execute based upon a condition. There's an inclusive gateway where the, the sequence flow will flow into that gateway. And then one or more paths from that out from that gateway will, will occur based upon some condition. 
And there's just an example of all the different elements all put together. You can see the process lane, the name, the pool on the far left. See the tasks, there's the flow, flow arrows, the events, the starting and the ending. So an example of a gateway. Okay, let's move on to our demonstration. But before we I launch into that with the software, I want to give you a brief overview of what, what, we, what we will be building. What we're going to build is a, essentially an invoice validation process. And the sequence will be a requester. We'll fill out an invoice validation request. They'll so have the invoice document attached. There will be a level one approver. So I say the user's manager would be the one to approve that. And then if it's over a certain amount, we'll say in our example, $5,000, that will have to go to a level two approver. And this is a very common thing that you'll find in a lot of organizations and often it is handled through email. The requester will, uh, maybe even a paper form, fill out a paper form and pass it off to another approver. Or in most cases it will be a Word document or a spreadsheet. They'll email that to their manager who will then look at it and the manager will say, oh, it's over such amount, I need to forward this to my manager to get them to approve it and has to come back. And It can be very complicated. But when you automate it, when you build a process inside of a business process modeling suite, such as we'll be doing, it very easily lets you put all that information online. It gets it up online that everyone can access from their desks, and, and it controls who's doing what, so the request will fill it in, and it would go to the right person. It would, the system could automatically know their manager, forward it to their manager. The manager would see it in their inbox or could get an email notification, then they could process it. And then the system will automatically check, all right, it's greater than 5,000, so I need to forward this to another manager, and it'll do that automatically. It takes away a lot of the basic uh, administration work that the user community has to do, so it's a very effective way to gain more efficiency in your processes and your business as a whole. So overall, here's what the technical interaction is going to be. The requester will fill, fill out an online form. They'll attach the uh, invoice. And then they'll go, the processes will, uh, execution engine will run it. It'll send it to level one validation if needed, level two if needed. And then whether it's approved or not, it will send an email notification back to the requester. So when it's all done, the requester, once they fire it off, they won't have to worry about it. When the process is completed, they'll get an answer whether accepted or rejected. So of course every process has to have some data. So this very simple example will have the name, the name of the requester, their email address, the amount of that's, that's on the invoice and the invoice document itself. And then there would also be some Boolean variables to, that we'll use as process variables to help us control the flow. Right, just to give you an overview, here is the example of a, of a BPN 2.0 diagram that we'll be building in the tool. So this is what we'll end up with is something very similar to it but when we're done. Okay, I'm now going to bounce over to to the tool. Here's the, hopefully everyone's seen this. Here is the BPN, uh, here is Benitasoft, Benita Studio, which is the desktop application that I mentioned before, where all the design and development work for your process takes place. And what I've already done, I've already started a new process, and so you can see here on this tab, my diagram 1.0. And I've also renamed the invoice validation lane. I also renamed my lane as well. So when I started it, it gave me a basic start element. Every process has a start, and it made a first step. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to modify, start building a process here on the fly. Before we do that, let's do a quick overview of the tool. See, the main, all the prior work will be done here in the white space, the whiteboard area, where we actually do our process layouts. And then on the left here, we'll see there's a palette of BPN 2.0 elements. All those elements we saw on the slide, start message, end message, timers, tasks, all those are all over here. So what I need to do, I just drag and drop. Just drop it onto the whiteboard. And what I'm going to do when I typically do my layouts, I like to lay it out, at least a happy path, you might say, a one path through the whole process, and then I will go ahead and fill it in later. Because one of the things we like to have with Bonita is to have like a business analyst yourself, such as someone in the audience, to go ahead and lay out a process. You know, I've did uh, it was many years as the BA myself, and I did a lot of process modeling, and I used a lot of tools such as Visio, 
Microsoft Word, maybe some wireframe diagramming tools to, to lay out an application, how the UI would work. And it was all very nice, it worked, but it was kind of cumbersome. And also it was difficult to go from those designs to a working prototype of my application. When I use a suite such as Bonita, what I'm doing, I'm doing laying out my diagram, but also I'm what I'm doing, I'm creating a prototype, we're creating the document itself, creating the application itself. So I'm not only doing my diagramming, I'm laying, laying out my application, and we'll see how that works here shortly. So I created a couple steps here. First task is going to be to create the request. Second task will be level one approval. You're going to make one of those gateways I mentioned. Here is where we will decide if it's greater than 5,000. Here we go. Now I'm going to assume that I'm going to do one step through here, assuming that everything is going to be approved. Level two. And there are lots of other different uh, ways that I can control these tasks, control their behavior, modify them. There are several different tabs down here. We don't have time in the webinar to do, cover all of these, but we do offer those demos if anyone's interested. And there's lots of webinars out there on the system, on the internet, on our website that you can go look at. I'm going to make one of those system tasks. Let's see. This is going to be a system task, so it won't be one that the user uses. And instead, what's going to happen here, I'm going to create one of those connectors I mentioned, which will talk to the email system and will automatically email the requester of approval. So I'm going to bring this over here. I'm going to end this. There we go. Change that. So what do we have here? We have the create the request, level one approval. Let's see. Let's see. We want to say if we go to here, we want to go here if it's approved. I can just easily rename the sequence flow to say, okay, here's what happens. If level one approval says yes, it moves to the next step, where the next step is to check the amount. If it's greater than 5,000, I will say yes. And then the flow will go to here, level two approval. And again here, whoops, there we go. If it's approved, we'll go to email approval. So what happens if it's not approved? What happens then? Here we will make another task. We name it email rejection. Make this a little bit more convenient to see. Okay, so we have here one quick path through, create the request, level one approval. Is it approved? Yes. Then check the value or the price. If it's greater than 5,000, yes. Send it to the level two approval. If it's approved, email approval. If it's rejected, we email rejection. And here we end. All right. So if level one does not approve it, what do we do? We need to come down here to indicate that it's been rejected. And what if it was not greater than 5,000? We're going to come over here. Make this the default flow. So what do we have here? We have the start, create the request, it goes to the level one approver if it's approved, but it's less than 5,000. We go ahead and just email the approval. No further validations required. If it's level one approval, and no matter what the value is, it doesn't get approved, it gets rejected, go ahead and email rejection. So we've done the basic layout of how we, what we need to do, of how our process is going to work. So as I mentioned, there's different data, there's several different data elements that we need to incorporate. So I'm going to click on my pool because I'm going to make these data elements be 
global and I had you know, data elements such as name and Bonita supports multiple different data elements boolean dates doubles longs but right now the name will be a basic text so I have the email address of the approver I have the price the price that's on the invoice I want the user to enter that and make that double so it could be a dollars and cents Now I'm going to also make some, remember I may mentioned some validation, some execution info data parameters. I'm going to make is level 1 approved. I'm going to make that a Boolean. It'll be yes or no. Make is level 2 approved. Also make that a Boolean. It'll be either a yes or no. Let's take a look here. Here's what we have. We click on the data tab. See our email, name, price, and our approvals. Very good. Now I'm going to make some actors. We have our basic layout. We want to make some actors. Now in Bonita, we have the and the we model actors by when you create your process here, as I've done. You simply. Uh, basically, you're creating an actor label. It's not tied to any users yet. We do that configuration, that mapping later. But right now we're saying, okay, here's going to be a requester. It's going to be the person I'm going to have requesting the invoice validation, level one approver, level two approver. So I've made it three actors here. One's the requester, level two approver, level one approver. And normally, what you, what you often what you would do, you'd make different swim lanes, like we saw earlier. You can make different swim lanes pretty easily by dragging and dropping them over here. But in this case, I'm not going to do that because I want to keep it a little bit simpler for the webinar. So I'm going to say click my task and see if I go to the actor panel down below, the property panel. I'll say I can either use the actor defined in the lane. And I'm not going to do that because I want to make these different, all these tasks different. Normally, like I said, we would, but we're not going to for this, not going to for this webinar. Instead, I'm going to say use the actor below. When I click this drop down in those three actors I just created at the pool level, which tells Bonita these three actors are one, all the actors that are going to be working on my uh, process. So I can define it individually and say, okay, create request will be the requester. Level one approver will be the level one approver actor. Level two approver approval will be from the level two approval. Since these are system tasks, I don't need to assign them an actors. There's no human actor that's going to be involved. It'll be done by the system. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and start to show the basics of making a form because we just create save. We created this flow. We have it laid out, outlined, and we're going to create a basic process diagram of uh, the user form that the user will use here to interact. So I went over to the Application tab, I selected the, the form, the task I want to add a form for, application tab, page flow. Page flow is a terminology that we use for multiple, one or more forms. It could be multiple forms that you create for this one task. So we call it a page flow. It's a flow of pages for the task. Or alternatively, if you have another application you want to use, you can tell Bonita, don't use a form that you've designed here in the studio, but instead redirect to an external application through a URL give it all the process data, here's all the process data, and have that external app go ahead and receive that URL and process, do whatever it needs to do. So you don't need to use Bonita Design Forms, although that's the most straightforward way. You could use others. But in this case, we will simply create a new form called Create Request. I see here, here are all my here are all my uh, data variables. And when I look at this list, I see there's something that I forgot to do. I forgot to add the document. It's going to be the invoice. So I'm going to go back to the process. Under the documents tab is where we define documents we can attach to the process. I'm going to rename it. You have the option of having it be an external reference or internal. I'm going to make it internal. And I am also going to, for the purposes of the demo to make things a little bit more quick, I'm going to give it a, give it a default value. So when it comes up, will be defaulted. 
There we go. So I have every, now I have everything I need. Save it really quickly, and I can now make my page flow. Create a new form. We can create request. See now I see my invoice documents on my list. Now this since this is a create, uh, it's a form for the creating the request. I don't want to see level one or level is level two or is level one approved. I want to see the email address, name, price, and that place to upload the documents. I'm going to say finish. And Benita will then take us into the HTML form builder that we have, which shows us a grid for our HTML elements. And we can modify those, the same metaphor, metaphors before. On the left is a palette with a different HTML elements, and you drag and drop onto your form. Down below are property panels that you use to control the behavior and the appearance of each one of those data elements, HTML elements. And it's pretty easy to go ahead and drag them around. Move this over here very quickly. Make that wide. I'm going to go to the general tab down here. I can rename that. I like it capital. Let's clean this up a little bit. There we go. So I've created a basic form so the requester can give their name, their email address, price, and invoice. All right. And then if I wanted to make uh, quickly make uh, an approval approver form with the subscription pack version, you get the option to create a duplicate form from one the, from one you've already created, which is what I'm going to do here. Now this, this makes it a lot easier. It makes it a lot easier to build, to build your um, build your processes and build your templates or your forms because if you have a basic core element form I'm looking for, so when you have your basic core element, um, your core form, you can use it as a base and use different ones. And, uh, modify it as you need. So here is the same form I used before, and what I want to do instead, I want to add two new checkboxes, or just one, actually at this point, level, level one on approval, give it the title, and when I was, I want to indicate what data variable this is talks, this talks to, and I give it the initial value here. Level one approved. When it's modified, I want you to take this and set level one approved. Do the text box here I just created. And these other fields here, I want to. I can easily in Bonita make them read only, whatever I might need. So I'm going to, since this is just an approval form, I'm going to make these read only. Just the document. I'm going to say it can only be downloaded, not be not modified. So I've created my level one approval form and my level create request form. I just wanted to do that to show the basics of the form building. Now there's other forms I can create, but instead of going through that whole process here, I am going to just go over to another version of the process I've already put together. It has in it all the forms that are built. It just has a time saver. Same thing as we just, de just devised. Here's the email approval, email rejection notice. We have our gateway. We have our labels. Also, if we look over here and go to the data, we'll see that we have all of our data elements here. A little bit different names, but it's essentially the same thing. So our forms are all being created. But let's go ahead and take a look at how we manage the flow through these manage the sequence. So here we have a flow that will be if level one validation is approved. How do we how do we get this path to be taken if that approval is made? We come down here 
to an expression, and we will automatically we'll say we're going to default. We're going to make a default flow out of this task will be to go to the approved path. Once we say default, we don't need to set an expression, but we need to define the rejected path. So here we have uh, we need to define our expression. Is level one valid equals to false? So here we're saying if the level is level one valid, remember we made that checkbox control so that level one valid is connected to that one particular checkbox control on that data form. If it's not set, is level one is level one valid will be false, so we take this path. If it's true, we'll assume it's approved and we'll go through this path. Remember we have okay, we have our condition here, our gateway. So we have to define two paths from here. So here we're going to say we need to find out, okay, is price greater than 5,000? You can see I've already made an expression. If I click on this little drop-down arrow, I see here all my process data variables I've already created. So I get access to all of these while I'm defining my, my conditions. So I'm saying this flow sequence happens if price is greater than 5,000. If I look at the no path, I say I can see that I've made it by default. So I'm assuming that the price will always be less than 5,000. So if it's not greater than 5,000, we'll take this path. Okay, well, let's set up the approve notice here from level two validation if we get this far. So we'll say default is approved. And we'll be using the expression. Oops. Level two equals to false. There we go. So we define the path from here to here. Very good. So I've defined that. I have my flow. I have my check boxes on my my forms. Forms here. Level one validation. Level two validation. Now, what's going to happen here when if I ran this, we just go to one of these states and nothing would happen because these are system tasks. So what I want to do is make a connector. I want to make email connectors so that emails will be sent. So I clicked on that task, email approval, hit connectors to add. And here we can see all the different connectors that are supported right out of the box from with Bonita. If I want to get some data from a database, I can easily add an email connector or a database connector that will let me, allow me to connect to many different types of databases, Microsoft SQL, Postgre, Oracle, any basic JDBC4 database. Also we have connectors for accessing Google Calendar, getting events, setting up events, creating events. It's all out of the box. Pretty simple basic scripts. But let's go ahead and use the messaging connector, which lets us talk to email through SMTP. So we'll say email approval. It defaulted to Gmail for me here. There's my port. I need to provide authentication. I'm going to hard code this. But normally what you could do, you would have maybe some account that you use. You can define who the parameters or process variables that would be this authentication. Saves from me. I'm going to make it there. SF. I'm going to, for the sake of the webinar, I'm going to be using a special demo account I've got set up to be viewed in another web browser. Some other information you can CC people if you need to with this connector, so it's pretty easy to send other messages or to CC others. So I'm going to do next. Here we see a subject line we get to create. And also there's a place to fill out the actual the email text. And what I've done ahead of time, I've pre-prepared a message that I'll be using. You can see you can see here, here is where we can define I get access to our process data. I have a variable called name and 
So I can just go dear name, and it'll, when this email is prepared, when the fourth sent, substitutions will happen. That name will be replaced with the name value value that's inside the name variable, as well as price will be substituted. So I want to add an attachment. Say, what do you want to attach? We'll attach that invoice document. So it's pretty easy to make an attachment. Do next, do finish. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing for the rejection. I'm going to take a slightly different path. I'm going to show you something that you can do if you're making lots of connectors. It's very easy to save the configuration information so you don't have to keep entering it over and over again. So I've already ahead of time I went ahead and made an email connection I saved my email connector settings in a, in a file here. I will use that. Oh save I save load. That's what I just selected. There we go. So it loaded everything. There we go. See, all this stuff was loaded for me because I saved it. There's nothing there. There's my email. So if I had several different things I needed to enter every time, I could save them and quickly reload them. See, it also saved my text. But I'm making a rejection, so I'm going to change it. My text. There we go. Same thing as before, dear name. Your invoice has been rejected. I changed the title. See so if I save the attachment, I save the attachment too. That's good. And hit finish. So I made my two connectors. Oops. So we have our process. Very good. Okay, I'm going to run it. Hopefully this will work. Okay, good. Remember those actors I mentioned? I said that they were just labels. Well, they have to be mapped. Now, right now, Benita is asking me, hey, you've got these actor labels. I don't know who those people are, what's supposed to be done. So it's telling me you need to map them to users or groups or roles. In the case of this, webinar, I'm going to map it to an individual user, a user that I use a lot for testing. Now this you can also map it to individual roles. In Bonita you can also set up um, groups, memberships, uh, different things. So you can, it doesn't just have to be an individual user, it can easily be another person or a group of people. So in this case, I'm defining it all to be the same user. Now, of course, in the real world, level one approver, approver and level two approver will be different people. And you can also set it up so that it will dynamically, say in the case of finding a manager, you can, it'll dynamically find the manager of the requester and make that person a level approver and it'll do that automatically. But for this simple or simple webinar, we'll just be using, making it all be the same user so we don't have to log in and out of the portal. Okay, this is now bringing me into my web application. So here's my basic form. I'm going to add that SF Bonita demo. Make it 6,000. So we go through the process. So here's my default. I can modify it if I want to use my invoice. So I'm going to hit yes. Submit. And it should take me to the level one or validation. See so here, my fields are read only. I can download that and view it if I wanted. It's downloading it. Let's say approval or not. After I view that, I'll say yes. Okay, since it was greater than 5,000, it's taking me to the next approver. I can see that level one approved it. Level two. Now it should be sending off my email. And it should eventually tell us that there's no more tasks available. So I'm going to come over to my email account. This is a Gmail account. 
where, which I have listening to that SF Bonita demo. You can see here, it's your dear Bob emails to inform you that your invoice of 6,000 has been approved. Also, I can see here is the invoice. If I click to all view in my email program, I can very easily see here's the demo document that I attached. And that was the basics of creating a using a tool like Bonita to create your invoice or a basic, very basic process. It lets you use the BPM and terminology to go ahead and automate your process, diagram it for one. A lot of other tools that let you diagram it, like Visio will let you diagram this, but it doesn't do anything. If you use a diagramming tool or in a full suite like Bonita, not only, not only do you have your diagram, but you also have the whole process built or prototy easily prototyped in software. So you can do just what I did. You can say run, and you can go through all the steps. And it very, makes it very easy to build, to get feedback, to uh, find out if the step's missing, if you need to add some new things. So as a BA, it's very handy to be able to have something like this where you can lay out the diagram. You can then show this to people. And then also you can just deploy a web application for them to use. And when they've got that in front of them, then they can, your stakeholders can see, okay, yes, this is great, or you know, we're missing a step here, we need this more information, or this information has to go from this step to this other step. And you've got that, you can very easily change your forms, change your tasks to go ahead and modify that process very quickly, and get, them, get that in front of them again very quickly. It really builds up or speeds up your development cycle, making it very easy to get that iteration cycle going where by the end of it you, you have your you build a process that your stakeholders want to have. Okay. All right, that's about it for the demo. I think we can probably move on to Q and A. And I think Viveka will be fielding questions for me. So Veka, Viveka, I don't know if you have any questions that have come through. Hi everyone. Yes, this is Rebecca. I'm with the Bonita Soft team here, and I'm help to. I'm here to help facilitate some of the questions since there is quite a volume of questions that came in. So what I'd like to do is ask the attendees to type their questions into the question box, and Barry and I will tackle those. There, there are some that came in while we were doing the presentation, so some of you may have already received answers, but. Feel free to type your questions in right now, and we'll tackle those for the next 15 minutes. And while you're typing those questions, uh, I'll go ahead and ask some to Barry that came in. So Barry, um, there were some questions uh, about um, integration. One of the attendees, Chris, um, asks if you can talk a little bit more about the integration um, and show what kind of systems are possible um, to integrate with. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. All right, Chris, the integration is done through you know, those connectors I mentioned. So if I say if I wanted to have this task maybe go get some user information or something from maybe as a common example as another database that you have, I could do add connector. And you see here is a list of connectors that we saw before where I can basically add those. And what, what connectors are? They're little bits of code or little... Um, snippets of software. Essentially from the user point of view, what the end user see is like we saw on that email connector, which is a series, it's a, basically it's a wizard. It walks the user through a series of panels or pages where it gathers the configuration information and other information that the connector needs in order to do what it needs to do. And this, in the case of the email connector, we saw one walk through what the SMTP gateway was, what the port was, authentication information, then it took us through, okay, what's the subject line, the text, and any attachments. So all that information that was needed by the connector was all added through those wizards. And each one of the, those connectors has a different set of wizards. In the case of, say, databases, it lets you, uh, you have to specify the database that you're talking to, the username to log in as, then you add your query, whatever you need to, your, to do with your database. Then also you specify, okay, once I get that data back from the database, what do I do with it? Because you might do a select across a broad range of columns, and you need to go into Bonita to tell it, okay, here, when you get that result set back, process it this way, take these columns and put them in these process variables, put them in those process variables, whatever you need to do. So all the interfacing is done through connectors. 
Now the connectors can be more sophisticated like a database connector or the messaging connector that we saw. Also, if you have scripts or other systems that you have available that you need to leverage in your processes, you can use uh, a Groovy script, which is basically a JavaScript, which will allow you to access uh, can access that, that those other tools. Command line script if you need to. You have very basic rudimentary things to get access to, you can do that. Plus, we have, do have more sophisticated connectors for Sugar CRM. And if you don't find one there that you want, you can also create your own. You can create, make your own definitions and make your own implementations. So we're all, we're, this is Java based, but the studio here is a desktop application built on Eclipse and everything that we do is Java based, but we don't, we don't aren't restricted just to Java. We can work, dot, work with .NET, system, .NET systems and other types of systems as well. So hopefully that answers your question, Chris. I think it does. Thank you, Barry. And, and to, to add to what Barry said, um, if you don't see a database or a system in the set of connectors that Barry just showed, our consultants and our services team can work with you based on an API to help you build a custom connector. So moving on to another question. Um, there was a question here um, from DJ. Can you use um, the Nita VPM as a standalone application? And also, are the process flows exportable? Well, thanks. Yes, thanks for the question. Yes, you can. Well, the intent is to, you know, what we saw here when I hit this run button, what's really happening behind the scenes is there's a Tomcat server that runs in the background here. Because this application we saw, as we saw that it was a web application, as, as the Bonita portal, where I'm going over to the Bonita portal, which will be the place where most users will access their tasks. So I can see the task that I've done. I'm logged on as William Jobs, the user I just framed my example from. I can see I did the step to create the quest, to create the request. And since I've mapped all my actors in my process to the same user, William Jobs, also that same user did the level one and level two validations. So this Bonita portal is running inside of a locally run uh, Tomcat server. So if you wanted to have, say, if I wanted to, I could to have some run this on a machine somewhere and run the studio and then have other users connect to the Tomcat server running here. Certainly it's not a recommended solution for doing any kind of production. Maybe for testing you could do that. You can just leave this up and running and other, allow access for other users to come in here inside of a inside your own firewall or whatnot to access this this Bonita portal and access the processes that way. Also, from what most customers do though, all the development is done inside the studio here and yes, you do have the ability to export. When you build your process, you actually go over here to the server tab and then there's a build process that we have where you can basically create, you tell it what to export. When you say build, what you're essentially doing is taking your process and we'll be deploying it for a production server. So if we go over to the Bonita portal, we'll see that there is the option to import other processes. You can install a new app in the Bonita portal terminology an app as a process. So yes, you can go to the Bonita Studio, do your server build, which creates a file, a file that represents your process, all of its forms, all of its data, everything. And then you take that over to an external, like an external Tomcat server, which runs the Bonita execution engine in the Bonita portal. And you do install, and you install that file into that external server. And again, the execution engine and the Bonita portal are web applications. So you typically what you do for production is you have an external Tomcat or JBoss and we support multiple application servers. Install the portal and the execution engine into that server. And then that's the thing that you use, make available to all your users. And when you've developed a new process and tested a new process in the studio, you export it and import it into the into that external portal. I hope that answered the question. It did. Thank you. So um, there is another question from Patricia about the HTML form builder. Can you go mm -hmm. back to the form builder and give us a little bit more information about some of the fields there and um, perfect and what they mean? Sure. And what the customization you can do as well. Okay. Yeah, so here's the, the basic for here's the form builder for the create initial form create request. 
at my different fields. I can add new ones from that palette. So I think, I think the gist of the question was how to modify these, these elements. So as before, I select the element, and then down below I've got general tab, uh, different property tabs. I can just change the, the label, change the name of the form if I want to, or the field. I can also change its type to different types of text areas, check boxes, text fields, whatever, whatever you have. And you also have user aids where if you want to say you have tooltip text, you can simply add this very easily. So tooltip text will appear over the forms over your element when someone would hover. Because they hover over this, this little help, same thing, very easily to add set that up. Options, if you want to build, have an HTML that exists right inside of your your field, you can do that. If you're more HTML savvy, you can simply add that. Also, we have HTML elements, which is just a basic element that contains HTML that you can drop onto your form and add your own HTML to it. If you have some existing code or HTML code you want to use, you can drag that onto your onto your forms and bring that HTML code into that widget and use that. Okay. You can control the data by setting up an initial value once you selected it, the field modifier, the output operations. Also, we more importantly, we have validators that come with. You can add a new validator. We have several types of validators that come out of the box as far as character validations, dates, a lot of basic field checking, numerics, email addresses, phone numbers. Those are all come are available straight away and if you had more sophisticated validation you needed to do you can build your own validator and add that pretty easily and also in the subscription pack another very powerful option is to have the field contingencies where if I let's say if I had two drop down fields on my form I could say that the content of field 2 over here is dependent upon the the setting that's in field 1 so you can in the studio without doing any external coding specify, tell the studio that these two fields are linked and then when one updates, updates and automatically updates the other one on the fly. Okay, awesome. great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Barry, so there's a question from James here and I think a lot of people may have this question as well because um, there are quite a few business analysts on this webinar um, mm -hmm. and I, I know there's a lot of hesitancy with coding and the level of technical expertise that is needed to use this system. So can you talk about how, um, the, how the system minimizes the need for coding? Um, what kind of coding skills do, would you need to know in order to use um, the needed EPM? Okay. Well, there's an awful lot, as we saw, an awful lot of work that you can do, really valuable work you can do without having to do any kind of coding. Um, what we're basically oriented around is Having, so you can have multiple people, like maybe a BA who isn't so uh, coding savvy, let's say, or doesn't really want to know the coding stuff. They just, want to, they just know the process. They talk to the stakeholders. Like when I was a BA, I would talk to a lot of stakeholders, find out what was happening. Then I needed to define the process, the, the as-is process, and eventually moving on to a to be or an updated process. So we have the option of just, you can just use it. Use Bonita first of all, first of all, first of all it's a diagramming tool, much like I showed. Simply draw out your your tasks, your flows, and you can implement all, put all that onto a form, into a diagram without needing to actually specify how something is going to happen. You can specify what, like a request, get, request gets created, level one validation takes place, level two validation takes place, put your gateways on, you can make define some basic data, like you know, okay, create request, it's gonna have that invoice document, it's gonna have the, uh, the user's name, their email address, all that is pretty straightforward. We saw how to do that with just using some of the property tabs down here. Data, you can just make a new data variable if you wanted to. That doesn't require any real coding. You can make text or numbers. It's very straightforward. So basically you can stay away from the coding if you chose to and then have someone else, more, say a more IT person come in. They wouldn't know maybe the process, but they know, okay, at this point, I need to do an email so they can come in and they can add the email connector because they know the port numbers, the validation, the authentication addresses, usernames and passwords, they know all that. Or even they could set that up ahead of time, much like we saw, I did that load and save. 
So it would be pretty straightforward to go ahead and say, I want to make a new email connector. My IT person already set up all of my, all my technical configuration information. I can just load that. And then all I have to do is just change my email text. I just need to add my new variables or change my text however I need. So an IT person can separately come in and modify it or make, set that stuff up for you. And then you can just include it. So you can avoid a lot of coding that way. Bonita is set up to be very user friendly. And if you're not a technical person, you can do a lot with it. As we saw, no, it didn't touch much coding here in this process at all. Or, but if you are an organization that has a lot of hardcore HTML or Java developers, whatever kind of set, scriptures, whatever type of developers you have, it's set up so they have a lot of power, a lot of access to doing a lot of sophisticated things. So we have both levels where we have the less technical level that can use it, and also if the, there's people who want to go deep technically, that we have that they can do that as well. Thank you, Barry. So there's a question from Craig and um, another related question from Lewis regarding um, the, the type of documentation that can be produced so that you can capture requirements for a definition deliverable and um, possibly for capturing progress for later analyses. So can you okay. talk about documentation generation? Sure. So as we saw here, there's lots of fields we have available to say, uh, we document what's happening here. So we have for basic fields for description descriptions for this task. We also have other fields for our data. Oops, my data. So there's many places inside of the tool where you can define your descriptions. Say, what is this email address for? So as you're building your model, you are updating your you're updating your, your documentation as you go. So you're keeping your documentation very close to your model and then the elements in it. So that's all nice to have. You see that in the tool, but if you want to export that, that's pretty easy to do too because we have a documentation generation option. Where very quickly with a few clicks, you can specify, uh, you can create a PDF document that will have all of your um, different elements in it. I'm going to go ahead and make, make this one. You can specify, make that look however you need. You can change the logos. You can do slot that you can do. We also support different uh, outputs, documents, HTML, or PowerPoint slide. I'm going to make a PDF. I'm going to generate this. It won't contain too much, but it will give an overview of the what that documentation looks like. So what's taking is all the documentation you added as you built your model, your variables, your flows, and it's going to put that all into one nice neat package, format it as you want. So I'm just taking a while, my laptop is slow. Um, we'll for package everything up into one nice package, in this case a PDF, and see we can see here's my title and my date, some basic keys for you readers, different just definitions of different fields, which is great if you're coming up to speed on BPM, it's a nice reference. But here, here's my main diagram. Here's my different data variables. I can click on one. It takes me to it. Different aspects of it. The container it's in. My different users. So a lot of different information is already just made for you straight out of, straight away. In just a few clicks, pretty automated. And this is something you can cut and paste or add to a uh, existing requirements document or whatever you need. Okay, great. I think that was very helpful for everyone. And um, James also has a question about importing uh, process models or diagrams from Visio and possible other sources. Can you tell us a bit more? We talked about exporting. Um, can you import okay. something diagrams? Yes, we can. We have an import option. And of course, we can import, of course, existing Bonita 6. 6, version 6 processes of version 5.9 if you are a, a legacy user. Uh, Visio, I talked about Visio in particular. And we support the VDX, it's Visio 2010. So if you have a diagram in Visio 2010, we can import that. Also, if you have a tool that exports to BPN 2.0 uh, or a framework or export mode, we can import that as well. We also support RS import of those documents, XPDL, 
We support that in JBPM. So if you have some JBPM documents in XML format, we can import those too. So there's a wide variety of things that we can import. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, there were quite a few questions around actor mapping and um, databases and um, LDAP synchronization. Um, can you talk more about how we could um, establish an actor mapping and what kind of um, systems would allow us to um, do that very smoothly? Sure. Yeah, before I do, I just wanted to point out we're at the we're at the top of the hour, so I don't know if we want to say. Conclude. I don't know what the uh, what Ben and, and Adrian, what you guys want to do as far as us uh, having like a soft close, and then people can stay online as they like, and I can, we can keep answering questions for like another ten minutes or so. If, sure if you, you want to do that, I I can't see any reason why not. Um, so yeah, go ahead and, and answer a few more questions, and then yeah, let's add another ten minutes to that, and like you said, do a soft close, and we should be good. Then. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm sorry, Rebecca. What was that question again? Sure, no problem. So the question was around actor mapping. Can you tell us more about that and how that would be um, established and configured? Sure. All right. Remember, we saw when I did that run, we saw uh, basically it was this dialog box that came up. See, what we have in version 6 of Bonita is the option to, actually, there's many different things we're configuring for a different environment. So what, what I did just now in the demo was to run locally. There's a local run, ran it on my local laptop. So what I can do, I can and on my laptop in my studio on my laptop or desktop, whatever it might be, I can build my process, set up my actors, which are just labels like I mentioned, and set up all that. And then what I can do is map those actors and there's other different things I can map as well for that local environment. Like in the example, I went ahead and made all my actors the same user for convenience. So I do my testing. I don't have to log in, log out. Uh, but then when I'm done with that, when I say I want to run to a maybe external QA environment, I would map to a maybe a different type of configuration, which is basically a different environment, say maybe qualification. And that would enable me to change those actor mappings to different users that are going to be in my QA environment. That way I don't have to change my process. I used to still use the same actor labels. But I'm just changing the groups of the users that they're involved with. So the question was like how to configure that. Uh, Bonita has the concept of an organization which stores all of the different users and how they're related to each other. So I want to manage my users. Acme is one, this is an example of uh, organization. You can define your own, of course, that uh, comes with Bonita as some example of something that you can use. But this just gives a good example of how things are organized in that organization. So we have the parent organization of Acme, a uh, fictional company. There's human resources groups, uh, finance groups, infrastructure groups, and some information about each one of those. There's groups and groups within groups, subgroups. You can find your groups. We also have roles. We can find a basic role. There's multiple roles. I could say in the case of invoice validation, I could have approver roles. So I could have a uh, people in finance who are approvers, whatever, whatever you might need. And then lastly, we also have all our users, basic information about our users, all information is here, and all this information that's defined here is also available from within, from within your process. So it's pretty straightforward to get this information. Like in the example of, uh, say, William Jobs or, or some other user, there will be some definition here for who their manager is. That's information that can be queried by the process to say, okay, we need, to go, we need to go find that user and get their manager and make them the next actor for the, their level one approval. And we have some demos that we do for customers. If you're interested in seeing them, you can contact us and we can show that to you. But you can define basically uh, for onboarding, let's say a new person is coming on board to a company, they're going to be assigned a, a reporting manager. So that gets defined inside of the process and the next step is for the system to go out and get the user's manager, send them an email that they have a new process, new employee they have to onboard, and so that's all done on the fly. Now that's another way that you can control your actor mapping. And it can, doesn't have to be done here inside of that dialog as I mentioned, as we just saw, but it can be done on the fly because we have the concept of actor filters. So here I have actors, here's where I define the actor. 
I can also define a filter, which is just another way to control who this actor is going to be. I can define the actors that are out of the box here to say for a single user to get a filter to get a user ID from a single user, performers, who's the initiator, who's the user's manager. That's one that comes with. It makes it easy to find the user's manager. And you can create your own as you need. So that's just the basic of the different environments and some more information about actor mapping and actor filtering and support. Okay, great, Barry. Thank you. Um, I think there have been quite a few people that dropped off so, and the questions are kind of dwindling at this point. So I think it's safe to close off the webinar and thank everyone for joining us. Um, it's been a real pleasure to partner with Modern Analysts and uh, educate um, the audience here on BPMN and the need of BPM and how those components come together to really build out a process um, that can be easily uh, developed and, and deployed. So thanks everyone for attending. Um, thank you Barry for doing a great job presenting and thank you for Modern Analysts for allowing us to sponsor this webinar. Um, if you do need to reach out to us, our email address is um, marketing.replies.bonitasoft.com. Um, Barry's email address is uh, barry.valentine at bonitasoft.com. So we'd love to hear from you. Check out our website. Download Bonita BPM by going to the website. You can actually play around with a lot of the functionalities that you saw today um, and experience this yourself. So um, please connect with us offline if you have any questions. And um, we look forward to hearing from you. And, and thank you for your time today. We hope you found this webinar very valuable. Thank you, Viveka, and thank you, Barry, for a very informative presentation. Thank you to everyone for attending today's Modern Analyst webinar. I wanted to point out that the webinar, along with the slides, will be archived at modernanalyst.com within a few days. And this concludes today's event, so we hope you have a great day.